Okay. So I'm trying to get ready. Prabhu, you got to send me these numbers before. I don't know the number. If you change numbers every time, I, I don't know what the numbers are. When did you send it? Huh? 2.30? I didn't see it. You know, usually every place they have the same number for the whole thing. I don't know, you have a different number every time. I thought the number in the morning would be the same in the evening. I was surpri I, I'm surprised that it's a totally different number. I'm trying to get in with that number. That's the problem. Okay, anyway, now I'm in. Okay. Yeah, it would be easier for me, you know, if you have a different number every time. <laughs> Okay, Hare Krishna. All right, so we're on Ishopanishad. Mantra four. Okay, Omagyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakturun Militanyena Tasma Shri Gurave Namaha. Vancha kaupata rubyascha kripa sindhu bhaevacha patita nam pavane vyo vaishnavi vyo namo namaha jai shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shri atvaita gadadhar shri vasadi gor bhakta vinda hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Om Purnam Madha Purnamidam, Purnat Purnam Mutachate, Purnasya Purnam Madhaya, Purnam Eva Vashishyate. Isavasya Midam Sarvam, Yadkincha Jagat Jam Jagat, Tena Chak Tena Punjita, Magridaha Kashasidhanam. Kurvane Vaha Karmani Jajivi Shakchatam Samaha Ivam Tvai Nanyate Tosti Na Karma Lipyate Nare Asurya Namate Loka Antena Tamastavrita Tamste Precha Pigachanti Yeke Chat Mahanojana Now we're on mantra number four. You can repeat, Anijade Kamanaso Jabio. Oh, Haribo. Naina Devam Apnuvam Purva Marshat. Tadhyavato nyanate titistat. Tasminapo matarishva tadalati. All right. So this morning, or to, earlier today, we were speaking about Atmaha. Remember? What is Atmaha? So, how do, you, how do you kill the soul? I thought the soul cannot be killed. Okay. To neglect the interests of the soul. Right. Hare <laughs> Krishna.
Yes, if we did not ne neglect the interests of the soul, it's like killing the soul. So we have to know how to take care of the soul. And so, how do we take care of the soul? What, is the, what does the soul need? Someone like to say, what is the need of the soul? Harinam, yeah, the holy name. Hmm? Yes, what did you say? Breaking the what? Breaking the cycle, getting free from the cycle of birth and death. Why? Why do you want to do that? Well, is this material world not the abode of God? I thought for the pure devotee, they see God everywhere. I thought God is everywhere, is He not? So, why do you need to, why do you need to go there? He's here. Uh-huh. You want to, why do you want to serve Krishna? We said Krishna is everywhere, he's here also, right? You can serve him here. Right? But not, Lord Chaitanya says, Lord Chaitanya said he doesn't want liberation. He says, I just want devotional service, birth after birth. Right? Yes, so you, don't you get association of the Lord here? Prahlad Maharaj, Prahlad, Prahlad Ma Well, you can do that here. I didn't. Okay, yeah. You have a valuable human, we have the value. The value of the human life is that we can use it to become God-conscious. Of course we can become God-conscious everywhere. Here also, Lord Chaitanya said, therefore, I just want devotional service, birth after birth. And Prahlad Maharaj said, he's not worried about himself, he said, wherever he goes, he can chant the holy name. No need to go there, he can do that here. So, devotee, we cultivate, cultivate the Ishavasha spirit, feel God in the center. So God's in the center, no need to go anywhere else. He's here, He's in the center. We keep Him in the center of our life, in the center of our activities. So we're fine here. This is, Prabhupada said, this is Vrindavan, this is the spiritual world. He was sitting in New York, he said, I'm not in New York. He said, I'm in Vrindavan. I'm always in Vrindavan. So, that's one way for the pure devotees. Take it like that. Keep yourself always Krishna conscious. On the other hand, yeah, you, you like to go back to Godhead, that's okay. Yes, you can have more personal connection with the Lord. You can maybe take part in his pastimes and have more intimate intimacy with him. 
directly serving him. Maybe we don't get that opportunity so much here because he's more aprakat. But in the spiritual world there he's prakat. Right? So, anyway, Krishna consciousness, the Ishavasya mood, Ishavasya spirit, that's very much required. And when we work in that spirit, then we'll feel the effects. The effect is no influence of the modes of nature, no anxiety. We should, well, of course there's also anxi anxiety also in the, in, in the spiritual sense, there's anxiety for Krishna, all right? And gopis were always anxious for Krishna. When Krishna was taken in the coils of the Kaliya serpent, then all the people of Vrindavan were in anxiety that Krishna is in the coils of Kaliya and he was held in the bottom of the water in the Yamuna for a long time and they thought Krishna must be dead. They were all in great anxiety. They were, they were collapsing, they were all totally in, in fright and so much worry about Krishna. Of course, that separation from Krishna, that is perfection. Krishna arranged that uh, separation to increase their ecstasy because the devotees, they feel the ecstasy of separation and that feeling the separation, it allows them to feel greater ecstasy when there's union. So when Krishna came out from the coils of Kaliya, then the people of Vrindavan all rejoiced and they felt greater ecstasy. So like that, there's ecstasies. Okay, anyway, let's go on. We're on this uh, fourth mantra now and we're going to hear about the Personality of Godhead. We've heard about uh, how he's the controller. So, uh, we're going to hear more about his characteristic and his qualifications, why he's so wonderful. So we'll invite Matijis to begin reading tonight. Maybe we can have uh, his uh, Bhaktin Shreya Parvati. Is she here tonight? Oh, what about Rasa Purnama Nima? She can read the read the translation. Hare Krishna. Okay, so we're hearing some details about the Lord. First of all, he has an abode, <laughs> right? He's fixed, he's fixed in his abode, he has his place there. But at the same time we hear some different things he does, his activities, swifter than the mind, can overcome all others running, demigods cannot approach him. He's in one place, but he controls those who supply their he surpasses everyone in excellence. Okay, go ahead, Manager, read the purport, first paragraph.
Okay, okay. so? Oh. So mental speculators. What, did, what, what are they trying to do? Maraji, you can tell us. So can you tell us something about what does it mean a mental speculator? Well, that might be their speculation, but in general, what, what, is, what does it mean if you see someone's a mental speculator? What are they doing? Hmm? It, you know, it speaks for itself. It means that they're trying to understand the nature of everything by the power of their, by the power of what? How are they trying to understand everything? Yes, by the mind, right? Yeah, by the, they, use your, they use their mind. What should they use to understand everything? How should we? Oh. Uh huh. Where where do we get the intelligence from? Where do we get intelligence from? Yes, right, through the scriptures, right. Yeah. We want to understand God, we have to hear about Him from the scriptures. And we can also hear from who else? Yeah? And any, anybody else? Yes, sadhu, shastra and guru, right? They are our guide. The sadhus, the holy men, the shastra, the scriptures, and guru, the spiritual teachers. Hmm? So the mental speculators, we, we may call them as jnanis. Jnanis, they cultivate knowledge and they try to understand everything through the mind. So sometimes Prabhupada will say we should, like here he said, it says mental speculators, they cannot understand the Supreme Lord. But in other places Prabhupada says we should try to understand the Lord by speculation. But how should we speculate? Are we allowed to speculate as devotees? Huh? What do you say? Is a devotee allowed to speculate? He is. He can. He is allowed to. But he has to be guided by shastra. When he does his speculation, he should try to understand the shastra. Sometimes you have to speculate. And Prabhupada gave an example. He said, just like Krishna says, "I am the taste in water." So we may want to understand. How is it Krishna is the taste in water? So we can speculate, but guided by Shastra. And we have to support our conclusions with the evidence from Shastra. Otherwise it's no use. Everything has to be backed up with knowledge from the scriptures. That's very important. So great philosophers, they cannot know the Lord. Why not? Why can they not know? They're so great, if they're great philosophers, why they cannot understand the Supreme Lord? Yes, anybody know? Do you know the answer? Why the great philosophers cannot understand the Lord? Please, somebody. What do you say?
Yeah, we are limited. Is, is the Lord limited? No. Right, He's unlimited. So we're li if we are limited, we cannot understand what is unlimited. So he's, it's beyond the power of our mind and senses to understand Him. You know, can you ask the devotees if they're not speaking, if they can close their mic, if they're not taking part in the conversation, better they close their microphones so we don't, so we don't get disturbed. So how we can understand Krishna, how we can understand God if He's so unlimited? By Shastra. Yeah, well, yes, we can read the Shastra, but yeah, the, the, the Lord's representative. Here, what does here Prabhupada? What does Prabhupada said? Prabhupada says he can be known only by his devotees through his mercy, right? Through the mercy, by the mercy of who? By the mercy of devotees, right? Through the mercy, known only by his devotees, through his mercy. So we know Krishna through the devotees. The devotees know Krishna through his mercy. So the mercy of the Lord. Krishna is great. He's infinite. He's very powerful. But if he wants to, he can reveal himself to his devotees, right? He will only reveal himself to his devotees. He doesn't reveal himself to other people. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Naham prakasya sarvatma yoga maya samavrita mudu yam nabijanati loko yam ajamavyam. Krishna said, I, I am never manifest to foolish and unintelligent people. For them I am covered by what? What is Krishna covered by? Yes, right, he's covered by yoga maya. Yoga maya covers up Krishna to, and, they th and they think Krishna is an, an ordinary person. Some people, the, the, pe the foolish people, they think, oh Krishna died, he got shot by an arrow in the foot. The hunter shot Krishna in the foot with an arrow and Krishna died. This is what they think of Krishna. This is the foolish people. Please, you, you mute your mic. Don't speak like that. You know, disturb the class. You know, this is an English class. If you're going to say something, please speak in English. So we can all understand. It will be good for the class. We like you to contribute to the, this class, but if you speak your own language, Malayali or whatever, you know, I, I can't understand. I don't know what you're talking. All right, so it can be known by mercy. We need to get Krishna's mercy, right? We're always trying to get the mercy of Krishna. And we get the mercy of Krishna through his devotees. The devotees, they give the mercy of Krishna. By, we're singing every morning, by the mercy of the spiritual master, we get the mercy of Krishna. And without the mercy of the spiritual master, then there's only havoc on the path of self-realization. So we get, the Lord can reveal himself if he wants, he, and he does, he reveals himself to his devotees, but not to the non-devotees. And Prabhupada quotes Brahma Samhita, non-devotee philosopher, travels at the speed of the wind or the mind for hundreds of millions of years. Still you'll find the truth is far, far away from him. Absolute truth. You see, we're not speaking here about God. Prabhupada uses these terms. He said the concept of the absolute truth is better than the concept of God. Because if we speak about God, there are many gods. 
Which God? Oh, my God, your God, India God, China God. There are many gods. But Prabhupada puts it on the absolute platform, the absolute truth, far, far away from him. So this concept of the Absolute Truth, this should be understood. The Absolute Personality of Godhead. And then Prabhupada talks about his transcendental abode. He has an abode, he has a place, indicating he's a person. He's not just simply some energy, some impersonal aspect, but he's a person. And he has, he has his own place, he has his own residence where he resides, and it is called Goloka. And he stays there, engaging in his pastimes by his inconceivable potencies, right? Inconceivable to us, but the Lord can reveal what is inconceivable by the Lord's mercy can be revealed to us. He could simultaneously reach every part of his creative energy. So, creative energy, could, what would that indicate? What is being referred to there? Every part of his creative energy. Anybody has, uh, like to say, tell us what is that? Every part of his creative energy? What is being referred to? Balaram Prabhu, do you know? He's referring to the, in, the internal potency and, and what else? Yeah, right. He's referring to his, his creative energy, his cre every part of creative energy. It means the material world, the whole material world is his creative energy. The spiritual world is also his energy. So then Prabhupada quotes Vishnu Purana, the heat and light from a fire. One place, they're in one place, but the fire can distribute heat and light for some distance. In the same way, pers the absolute personality of Godhead is in his abode, but he can diffuse his energies everywhere. Just like the heat and the light is spread everywhere. So the Lord's energies are also spread everywhere. All right, we'll go ahead. Uh, we'll have another marriage read for us here. Um, let's see who's who's not ready yet. Uh, right, um, what about D. Priya Gop, 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 Gopal Lani? Huh? D. Priya Gandharvika. D. Priya Gandharvika. Is she here? Yes. Are you are you a Gandharva? You're Gandharvika. Very good. You were so fortunate. Such a nice name. Please read for us. Although his energies. Thank you. Would you like to summarize some points from this paragraph for us? What did you understand? So, 
So the internal potency, what is that? What does that cover? Yes. Right, yes. The spiritual world, right? In the spiritual world, how many planets are there? Any idea? Innumerable, right. Innumerable planets in Vaikuntha, right? And what, what's the supreme planet in the spiritual world? Goloka, right, yes. Right, okay, Goloka. And then we've got the marginal potency, which means what? Anybody else? Only demigods are the marginal potency? Okay, human beings also belong to the marginal potency. What about the animals and plants? Really? They don't have a soul? Huh? They do, right? So? So what potency are they? Hmm? Yeah, the mar marginal potency. All the living entities are marginal potency, right? All that, that means all the animals, the plants, the trees, the fish, the birds, they're all souls and so they're all part of the marginal potency. And the demigods also. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? And what about the, the material, pot the external potency then? What is that? Maharaji, may you go ahead, Maharaji, speak. Yes, right, the material world. What's the material world made up of? Yes, the 14 planetary system. Can you tell me what the elements are? which make up the, 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 the material world? Okay, you're describing this, the universal structure for me. But I want to know what, what, what elements are actually used by the Lord to create? Yes, a punch. Yes, and anything else? Okay. Yes, right. My, is mind intelligence and false ego is that there in the in the in, in the in the in the elements of the material world? Do we find the, this mind intelligence and false ego in the in the material energy? In the elements of the material energy, do we find that in in inner matter? Are we going to find mind, intelligence and false ego? No, right? Yeah, the, the table doesn't have any mind or intelligence or false ego. 
What's the difference between the, the material energy and the marginal potency? What makes the difference? Yes, thank you. Consciousness, right? There's no consciousness in the elements of the material energy. Your car, your table, your chair doesn't have any consciousness, right? So there's no mind, there's no intelligence, false ego either. There's no consciousness. Consciousness, of course, comes from where? Where does the consciousness come from? Does it come from the mind, the intelligence, and the ego? Where does consciousness come from? From the soul, right. Consciousness comes from the soul. So the material world is the creation of the Lord's external potency spiritual skies, the kingdom of God. Okay, we'll go ahead. Let's have somebody else read. Uh, who's next? We've got somebody. Uh, what about Sri Rupa? Is she here? Okay. Would you like to read for us, Mariji, please? All right, so would you like to summarize the message of this paragraph? I don't know. You your, your voice is not very clear. Is there something? Is there maybe your microphone or something? Are you? I, I don't know. I can't hardly hear what you're saying. Oh, the, yes, much better. So does he have an does he have an impersonal form? Does he have an impersonal feature, or does he only have personal feature? Sometimes people are fond of worshipping the energy. They like the idea of energy, you know. This idea of energy is very attractive to people. That, oh, energy, the Lord is all-pervading energy. People are fond of thinking of God in this impersonal way. They think if God is a person, if he's a person, as a the Supreme Lord is. So it's important to try to understand the personal aspect of the Lord. Not just simply that
and when we hear that he's everywhere, so we think then, you know, then he's not a person, because how could, if, he, if he's everywhere, then he couldn't be in one place. But this is the inconceivable nature of the Supreme Lord, that he can be distributed everywhere. And what, in what way is he distributed everywhere? Can you tell us, can you give some example of his energy? Well, the sun is not everywhere. Right, Paramatma, right, Paramatma. What does Krishna say in the Bhagavad Gita? In chapter 10, Lord Krishna is describing, you know the 10th chapter Bhagavad Gita? What's the title? Okay, Vibhuti Yoga, yeah. And Krishna describes all of his opulences and after he's described all of them, he says, but what need is there, O Arjun, for all of this detailed knowledge? With a single fragment of myself, I pervade and support this entire creation. Right? What is that fragment? What is that fragment of Krishna? Which is pervading and supporting the entire creation? You just told me. Yes, right, Paramatma, right. You just told me, yeah. So the, with the Paramatma feature, he's pervading and supporting the entire creation. And Krishna said, uh, is it everything rests on me, right? There's no truth superior to me. Everything rests on me, just like pearls are strung on a thread. And Krishna gives the example about the beads on the thread, just like we have our neck beads, you don't see the thread, you only see the beads. So the same way we see everything, we see the whole universe, the whole creation, we don't see Krishna. But Krishna is behind everything, he's holding everything. The planets are hold, being held in space by him. Everything is in, in, under his control, under his grasp. But at the same time, he, he's very cautious. He doesn't reveal himself to everyone. So, we have to understand how the Lord is everywhere, impersonally, and that he has all, also, he has his personal existence. He's both personal and impersonal. As Prabhupada said, he is everything within our experience and beyond it. So, we did, remember the example about the elephants, the blind man massaging the elephant? Right? They understand some part of the elephant. So some people, they only understand the impersonal feature of God. They think this is God, this, uh, the energy, right? The, the Brahman, the, imper the Mayavadis, the Gyanis, they say Sarvam Kaufidam Brahma. Everything is Brahman. And they think when Krishna comes in the world that he is also Brahman. But they don't understand that the, the Krishna is not simply Brahman, but he is Parabrahman. He is the Supreme Brahman. So the the problem is, they are trying to understand God according to their capacity for understanding. According to their capacity to understand. They try to understand God. It's not like that. God is Krishna, the Supreme Lord, the Absolute Truth is beyond our capacity to understand. How can we understand Him? By mercy, His mercy, He can reveal Himself to us. And we get His mercy when we do devotional service. So the Supreme Lord 
it's not subject to our limited capacity for understanding. It is for this reason the Upanishads warn us, no one can approach the Lord by his own limited potency. So the Upanishads are telling us like this, we are limited, the Lord is unlimited. We want to understand him, we have to take shelter, we have to surrender to him. And when he's pleased by our surrender, he can reveal himself to us. So the Upanishads are warning us, don't try to understand God by our own efforts. Remember when we were reading the introduction, it spoke about two processes. One was, do you remember the two processes? How were, yes? What were they? Uh huh. Yes. Can, yes. Can you give me the English? Yes. Or we would simply say one is the ascending process and one is the descending process, right? Ascending, ascending is what, what are we trying to do by the ascending process? How are we trying to understand? Maraji, can you tell us? If we're doing that, if we're going by the ascending process, Sri Rupa Mataji, if we are going by the ascending process, then how are we trying to understand God? What are we doing? No, no, let Mataji try. Give her more time. Any answer? No? Okay, Prabhu, what's the answer? Uh, all right, we open it to the class. Someone's trying to understand God by ascending process. How do they try to understand God? What do they do? One word. No, no, ascending. One word, yes, speculation, thank you, speculation, this is speculation, the ascending process. Is God like this? Is He like that? Is He like this? Speculation, trying to understand by the power of our mind. And the descending process, descending process, that is Sadhu Shastra Guru. The knowledge comes, we take it, Guru says like this, Guru says like, Shastra said like that, okay, accept it, descending. Which is easier, going up or coming down? Yes, going down is easy, right? The, there's two creatures, one is, the, one is the, the kitten and one is the monkey. You know the monkey? carries the, the baby monkey. How does the baby monkey hold on to the mother? Have you seen the monkeys in Vrindavan? How does, he, how does the young monkey, what do they do? Right, they hold on to the chest of the mother, right? But they, but they can easily fall. They're not very secure. But what about the kitten with the cat? Right, in the jaws of the kit, the kittens in the jaws of the... So who's safer, the monkey or the kitten? Yes, the kitten, right. So we're like that, we're safer. 
We are coming down, you see, taking down. Okay. Go ahead. Someone else can read. Let's have a Prabhu read. Have we got some men to read yet? Mm. Uh, Ara, Ara, Nang, Arava Nakshagora. Huh? Yeah, Ara Nakshagora. Prabhu, would you like to read, please? Hare Krishna Prabhu. In the Bhagavad Gita 10.2. Okay, what were some of these personal features? What were these details which were mentioned to support his personal features? Look at the text, Mantra 4. What does it say? Well, we want to support his personal features. If he's present everywhere, that doesn't help us to understand his personal features. Look in the mantra, mantra four. Some details to support his personal features. First of all, it said he has an abode, his abode. And he can overcome all others running, means he can run, right? He's in one place, but he controls others. So, these are all personal attributes. He has a controlling power, he can run, he has an abode, he's swift. Like they said, we want to understand these, these are descriptions of his personal features. So, great rishis and sages, they don't know him. Why? Yeah, maybe, because maybe they, they, they're not devotees. They didn't do devotional service. They didn't follow the process. They tried to understand him by their own mind and senses. They may be great rishis and suras, but the Lord is unlimited, infinite. They're limited additions. So how much can they know of him? Can know a little. So, so the, for the asuras, it's even more difficult. Okay, so we'll go ahead. Somebody else to read? Let's see next year. We have. Ah. Sasna. Sas. Yes? What's your name, Prabhu? What about Sas? That's one Chaitanya. Yes, Prabhu, you please read.
Yes? So, give me a summary. What did you appreciate from this? Okay. So, we're one. In, what, what, we're we're part of the Lord. So, what's the difference between us? What? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. That's a idea that we are part but never equal to the whole. One in quality, different in quantity, right? And we are the marginal potency. Marginal potency means what? What's the margin? Margin between what? Yes, but what, what the margin, where's the, the margin means the margin between two things. What's on the other sides? What's the margin between, on the, on either? Between the material energy on one side and on the other side is what? The spiritual energy, right. So the, we are the living entities, we are the marginal. So, where are we? Are we in the spiritual energy or the, the marginal? You know, we cannot just take, yeah? Where are we? Where are... No, you can't remain in the marginal, you can't remain there. Either you're in the material or in the spiritual. Just like, just like, uh, you come to India and you go to Pakistan, there's a border. Now either you're in India or you're in Pakistan. You can't just be in the, in the border all the time, can you? You're either in the land or you're in the water. You can't be in the, on the border all the time, you have to be one or the other. So marginal, where are we? Yes, yes, Prabhupada said, under the influence of material nature, yeah, yeah, we're, we're under the material energy, we're the foolish and ignorant people under the material energy, but we are parts of the Lord. Hmm? We try to conjecture, we try to understand, we think about the Lord's transcendental position. Sri Ishopanishad warns of the futility to establish the identity of the Lord through mental speculation. So, can we understand the Lord through mental speculation? Can we understand anything about the Lord through mental speculation? Where can we go? What's the far furthest we can go? The Gyani. Where can they go? But we can go to the Brahman, the, the Brahmajoiti, in personal liberation. They can go that far, but they can't go any further. Right? Once you try to learn of the transcendence, from the Lord Himself, the Supreme Source of the Vedas. The Lord alone has full knowledge of the transcendence. So we have to learn from the Lord Himself. How to do that? Where's the Lord? Where can we, how can we learn from the Lord? What should we do? Yeah, Bhagavad Krishna spoke, Bhagavad Gita, right? The Source of the Vedas. By all the Vedas, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, what does he say about the Vedas? You know the verse, Bhagavad Gita chapter 15, verse 15?
Okay, meaning meaning, give me the meaning in English. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Mataji. Krishna is saying, I am the author and I am the compiler of the Vedas. By all the Vedas I am to be known. So this is the idea, we want to understand Krishna, we can understand him from the Vedas. We'll go ahead, somebody else to read, next person, uh, we've got uh, Sundar, Ch Ch Sundar Chandra, yes, okay Prabhu, please read for us. Thank you. Yes? This Prabhu, would you like to tell us, Prabhu, what is the, some point here from this? What, what was the effect of the Maya? What happened? And what is that illusion? With it, what happens? Our spiritual position, right. And, and un, under illusion, what are we thinking? Right, we're thinking, I am the body, and we're thinking also, I can enjoy the body, right? How will we enjoy the body? How do we enjoy the body? Yes, through the senses. And what are the senses doing? Eating, sleeping, mating, defending, like that. This is the enjoyment of the body. So Ishopanishad warns us to be very careful to play the part which we're meant to be doing. We have to, as you said, we have to use our initiative. But it's not that we're not supposed to think for ourselves. Yeah, we have to use our initiative, but that initiative has to be used in conjunction with the initiative of the Supreme Lord. That, that is like yoga. Yoga means to connect, to link, right? We are the part and parcel of the Lord. So we want to connect with the Lord because we are part of Him. We have a relationship, a connection with Him. And we want to connect and that's, we use our initiative to cooperate with the initiative of the Lord. And when we use the initiative properly, then everything 
that understanding that everything is the Lord, then he can he can we can get back our original consciousness. What is the original consciousness? Right. Shivarswarupahaya Nitya Krishna Das. Right? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, we're all eternally the servants of the Supreme Lord. But due to contact with Maya, we forgot. We became covered. You know? The example was given about the sunlight and darkness. Right? We just soon, as soon as we put out the light, immediately the darkness is there. So maya is like that. In the same way, as soon as we become Krishna conscious, immediately the light is there. Krishna Suryasam, Maya Haya Andika. There's Krishna and there's Maya. There's the sunlight and there's the darkness. So, the, the natural condition is to be in the light. The absence of the light, we're in darkness. That our natural position is to be Krishna conscious. But, due to Maya, we're forgetting. This is the external potency of the Lord. External energy, Maya, right? The material world is all Maya. It's all the Lord's external energy. It's real, but it's temporary. All right, we'll go ahead. One more verse, one more paragraph here. Okay. All power is obtained from the Lord. Therefore, each per must be utilized to execute the will of the Lord. Right? We said Krishna is the proprietor or the Supreme Lord. That Supreme Lord is the proprietor. Everything belongs to Him. So the power is also His. So whatever powers we have, that also belongs to Him. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, I am the ability in man. So ability, our ability is given to us by the grace of God. We are meant to use it for Him. And at any time He can take it away from us. So the Lord can be known by one who has adopted a submissive service attitude. In other words, surrender, right? The mood of sur service and surrender. When, one, when we become submissive, then we will surrender ourselves and we will want to give, offer some service. And this way Krishna becomes pleased, he reveals himself. And then perfect knowledge means knowing the Lord in all of his features. What are some of the features of the Lord? Do you, you remember what fe what are some of the different features? Yes, right. These are the three. This is, this is the absolute truth. Right. The Srimad Bhagavatam said, uh, learned persons call the absolute truth Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. The, this non dual substance. Non dual, it's the same thing. Learned transcendentalists call this non-dual substance Brahman, Paramatma, Bhagavan. Different features of the Lord. It's all the Lord, but different features. Knowing His potencies and knowing how these potencies work by His will. Potencies, what kind of potencies does the Lord have?
What can you do? We no, we, how will he use his, his potencies? They work by his will. What does he do? He does the work of creation, right? Shristi Tattva, the Shristi Tattva, that potency to create. It brings about the creation. It all, it's going on under his direction. This is one of his potencies. He also has, has the potency to give pleasure. And he also has the potency to give knowledge. This, this is all his different potencies. And it's working, these potencies are working under his, by his will, simply by his will alone. These matters are described in Bhagavad Gita, the essence of all Upanishads, right? Okay. So any questions on this mantra tonight? Let's hear. We're hearing about the Lord, how he is in his abode. So he has a boat and he can run. Powerful demigod. How many demigods are there? In the material world? How many demigods are there? 33 crores, right? A lot of demigods. Powerful. And many of them are very powerful, but they're not as powerful as the personality of Godhead, the Supreme Lord. He, they, they cannot even approach Him. Right? We read in the 10th canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, or in the Krishna book, if you read the Krishna book, you read at the time before Lord Krishna's appearance, Mother Bhumi was overwhelmed by the burden of all the kings on her planet. So what did she do? Who did she go to? Yes, she went to Brahma for help. And then what did Brahma do? Yes, he... Yes. And they went to see, they went to the shore of Sweta Dweep, right? On the shore of... And, and they prayed, Brahma prayed to Lord Vishnu. Shirodakashai Vishnu, right? There are three Vishnus, actually. So, the, the demigods, they cannot even approach the Supreme Lord. They have to just go, they have to go and pray, you know, oh, my Lord, we need your help. Can you help us? You know, when they're in trouble, the demigods will pray to the Lord. And the Lord will come and help them. Just like the Lord came as... Bali, uh, the, when Bali Maharaj conquered the demigods, they were in trouble. They lost their kingdom. And Mother Aditi, she prayed to get a son. And so she got Lord Vamanadev as her son. And Lord Vamanadev helped the demigods to get back the heavenly planets. <laughs> so the demigods, they cannot even approach the Lord. Are the demigods pure devotees? Why not? Well, pure devotees can be in the material world also. It's not that pure devotees, they, because they're in this world, they can't be pure. You know, they have a, they, there are pure devotees in this world. So what's the point about the demigods? You, you're right, they're not pure devotees. What's their problem? Yes, right. They have a desire. Uh -huh. They like to enjoy power. Hmm. 
Right, they're not doing pure devotion. But at the same time, what's their good quality? Yes, they're obedient to the Lord, right. But they're not pure devotees, they have some material desires. So, how do we view the demigods? What's the devotee's position in relationship to de demigods? So, should we respect the demigods or not? Do we respect the demigods? Are you going to respect them? Are you going to respect the demigods or not? Ah, we don't worship them for material benefits. We can worship them to help our devotional service. If we see them in relationship to the Supreme Lord, then you can worship them, right? Bharat Maharaj did that. He was worshipping the demigods, he, but he saw them in relation to the Supreme. And the gopis worship Kadyayani to get Krishna as a husband <laughs> for the pleasure of Krishna. Okay, so we're cautious. We offer respects to the demigods, so that's important that we, we do we actually I was with Prabhupada one time we went to a Hindu temple in London and uh, it, they were worshipping Brahma Vishnu and Shiva and Srila Prabhupada explained to them he said a devotee of Krishna not only offers his respects to Brahma Vishnu and Shiva they will offer their respect even to a tiny insect because they see within the insect, the Lord is also there. Just as the Lord is within the heart of Brahma and, and Shiva, and Vish, He's also in the heart of all the living entities, the tiny insects. And so we respect all living entities. Prabhupada said like that. Okay, so powerful demigods, they cannot approach Krishna on their own. At the same time, the Lord is in one place and He controls all these demigods. They're under His control. So He has this controlling power. We have, we have very small controlling power. We're trying to control. <laughs> but we're failing. We're always failing. We cannot even control our mind. And we cannot control our bowels sometimes. We have so many troubles trying to control. So the Lord, He controls. He surpasses everybody in excellence. All right? Any, any question? Is it clear? Yes, Prabhu? Lord Shiva is not a jiva. He's above the jivas. Lord Shiva is like God of the material world. In the material world, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva are God. The relationship between Vishnu and Shiva is described to be like that between uh, milk and yogurt. So, milk can be made into yogurt, but yogurt cannot be made into milk. So, Vishnu, he can become Shiva, but Shiva never becomes Vishnu. So, Shiva is he's a great, he's not only a pure devotee, but he's also actually not different from the Lord himself. He's given the respect of the Supreme Lord. Is respected like God. So we're very careful in dealing with Lord Shiva. Sanatana Goswami was a great devotee of Lord Shiva. You know Sanatana Goswami? 
one of the six Goswamis who resided in Vrindavan. He built the Madan Mohan temple. He was a great devotee of Lord Shiva. And you'll find a lot of glorification of Shiva in his uh, Brihad Bhagavatamrita. So Lord Shiva is he's both the pure devotee and he's also the Supreme Lord himself. We respect Lord Shiva like God. Because he is God of the material world. He's, he's not he's not Jiva Tattva. And he's not Vishnu Tattva. <laughs> he's between the Jiva Tattva and the Vishnu Tattva. So on Shivratri, Vaishnavas, they may celebrate it, they may not. It's, it's arbitrary. They can decide, they can choose for themselves whether to, set, whether to fall, observe Shivratri or not. Sometimes they do, sometimes not. Prabhupada was very cautious about introducing Lord Shiva into the ISKCON society. And I remember one time we had the temple, we were opening the temple in Hyderabad, in Andhra Pradesh, and uh, one devotee said, you know, Prabhupada, let's put Shivalinga here, because our temple in Hyderabad, they have Gornitai, they have Radha Madan Mohan, and they have Jagannath Maladev Subhadra. But this one devotee said to Prabhupada, he said, Prabhupada, he said, people in this city, they all like Lord Shiva. If we put a Shiva Linga here, everybody will come. Prabhupada said, yes, but he said, if we do that, they'll think Lord Shiva is the same as all the deities. They'll think Lord Shiva is on the same level as all the deities. But he's not. He's not on the same level as Gornitai or Radha Madan Mohan or Jagannath Baladev Subhadra. He's different from that. He's between Vishnu Tattva and Jiva Tattva. He's not living ordinary living entity either, but he's above ordinary living entities and he's below the level of the Supreme Lord. So Prabhupada, yeah, he, he didn't like, you know, he was very cautious. He didn't want people Every other temple, you see, they put all the gods. And people think all the gods are the same. They're all one. They don't see any difference. This is a problem. Yes, another question? I can hear you, Prabhu, yes. The Nitya Muktas, are they under, are they still the marginal potency? Yes. Yes, they're still the marginal potency. But when they go to the spiritual world, then, you know, they can be also Nitya, nitya uh, Muktas, li eternally liberating souls. But there's, it doesn't change the fact that they're the marginal potency. By nature, they're the marginal potency. Tatasta Shakti. But they can still be nitya muktas, liberated souls, eternally liberated. It means they have no defects, right? And the nitya badas, they're, they're eternally conditioned souls. The, the nitya badas can also become nitya muktas. It's not that because you're nitya bada you have to remain a nitya bada. Nitya badas, the conditioned souls, can become liberated souls. 
they can become liberated, they can become Nityamuktas by devotional service, by the process of devotional service. The conditioned souls become liberated souls. The, the term Nitya indicates that we've been in the material world a very long time. Not that you have to remain here, but that it, it simply implies that we've been here a very, very long time. And we can, we can get free from that. A nitya, nitya mukta means they're liberated. Yeah, yeah, they, they come into the material world, they're liberated. So, nitya mukta. But still, still the marginal potency, tatasta shakti, that remains. So, nitya mukta so, they, they can fall from the spiritual world. We have that free will. Yes. Any other any other question? Okay. No other questions. Then we'll stop here tonight. Let you all go. Thank you very much for your time. And we'll meet again Sunday evening. Okay. Thank you. 7.30. Thank you, Prabhu. Srila Prabhupada. Jai. Hare Krishna Prabhu.